<laughs> yeah, what are you? Hmm. Ah. Hey, folks. How's everybody? Let's see now. Just gonna try and not be a complete idiot here. I just realize I got a message someone. <laughs> I'll let them know that I am alive. <laughs> Live. Nope. Live streaming. The phone kept trying to replace the word live with lube and I don't think that's a good idea lube streaming would seem a little bit peculiar okay what are you hey margarita doctor paul ray Lars, jay vulco apahi hmm travis alan Wollescroft. hello sean collins and Lodim Dim Who else we got? Mick Linnell and Peter. Michael Olson from Denmark and Unix Psycho. Hello. Alright. I'm pretty much probably already started missing people. Let's see what have we got here. An iPhone six S plus battery. That is dead. It's brand new. But it's dead. Well, throw that in the bin. Not much point. I mean yeah, sure, it's fifteen, sixteen dollars, but by the time I try and get a refund on that and all the back and forth, and it's a nice fat waste of my time. It's just not worth it. Okay, now I need to put my protective hoodie on to my extractor, my turbo cooler, because I really don't care to have stuff getting sucked into the extractor fan. Because while it may be amusing for some people when stuff gets sucked into their extractor fans, because I do not have a uh, do not have a protective barrier between the intake and the impeller blades on this one, as you can imagine, the effects will be somewhat more disastrous, somewhat more dramatic. Hey Jim, you made it. Good. I just messaged you. <laughs> All right, Mr. Magna. Uh, I'll just put the rubber band around this one. The rubber band's probably snapped, that's why the other one fell off. Alright, I've got a laptop here that's... It went out... Um, I fixed it a few weeks ago. I tested it, everything seemed good. I sent it back and it's bounced and that's really upset me. I hate bouncing ones, as you can imagine. Let's see... Now bouncers are bad because they reflect poorly on your quality of work. So yeah, uh, you really don't want that happening. Right, yes, that's this is the one. And I've got to try and find out why it bounced. Hey, what the Hey John's touchpad? Now, I was spending a fair bit of time this evening looking up bows and arrows. I was trying to see what bow and arrow I can get myself. Which is fun because I'm left-handed, so the options are a little less um, expansive. I don't want to get a compound bow. You buy one of those up here in Queensland and you've got to declare that you have them. Things like that. So I'm just planning on getting like a long bow of some sort. Well, it's a nice chunky piece of um, long screw damage in there, but on these uh, 34, 37 boards and the 165s, long screw damage in there is of no relevance. It's just a ground plane. Sean, thank you. 2299, interesting number. <laughs> ah, because I'm left handed too. Oh, brilliant. You know, some people are going to say they're double left handed, which means they're right handed. So this may not be a board that I actually do a lot of work on. Sometimes when you get these bounced boards, 
you are genuinely better off just putting it aside, saying, okay, you're an unpredictable board, and you're just using it in the workshop and nothing more. Because the last thing you want to do is send back a bouncer and have it bounce yet again. So it is extraordinarily detrimental to your business standing and, of course, the person who hired you to do the job. Yeah, because they've got to deal with the customer going, that board bounced on me again. I can't do a Lewis Rossman impersonation of Lewis Rossman doing an impersonation. But um, Lewis does do the most fantastic angry customer or squeaky customer type impersonation. It's one of the few times he makes me laugh. Anyway, uh, enough of my um, apparent man crush on his activities. Is that a damaged diode down there? Not that that would cause a bounce issue, but it is a slightly damaged, but it does look more like it's just, um, yeah, it's, I'd be surprised if that was causing it. It'd have to literally rip the tracks off to be problematic in that case. Trying to slide the bar closer to the 20 you could get. <laughs> oh, well you did not too bad. 22.99. It, it sort of um, plays the OCD a little bit in different ways. In a satisfying way, I should rather say. Yeah, so I'm just giving this the once over and having a look. Let's see if I can find out why. If there's something I've drastically missed but um, so far I'm just not seeing anything and this is why generally when you do get bounces you just gotta put them to the side use them as internal workshop boards now, like I need to have a one of these boards for my flexboard view compiler so what I'll probably do is take the board out of my existing flexboard view A1466 and swap it with this one because I know that one works or at least it seems to because what's going to be really cruel is if it bounces again and then you go okay look now I really know it's not a problem with the board it's something else in the chassis yeah I really can't spot anything on this one it's because he has a New York accent so it automatically sounds angry hmm Oh, Travis, it's not really a bromance. It's just more Lewis hates me and I entertain that. The worst thing is when you do get these bounce events, most of the time the person does not have the equipment on hand to be able to even provide you with some sort of indication as to how it's happening. So, in this particular case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the person, the um, shop, one of the um, chipmunks. And so, once I've got a chipmunk, then they can at least tell me whether I've got CPU activity or whatever's happening. And at least then I've got a half a fighting chance of chasing down what's going on. Because right now, yeah, this board's been through the ultrasonic, so I'm not going to be able to spot squat on it. Yeah. Oh dear. Well, I'll tell you what, if it's going to be a bromance, it needs to pay me better. Instead, it just gives me dodgy flux and lots of abuse. And then demands things. Unrelenting demands. Hey, at least, um, at least Dave Jones gave me a passing comment today. Thanks to Jim for pointing that out. Actually, Jim, I noticed that was an unlisted video. Was that sort of a Patreon video or something. Let's see, SMC bulls seem fine. Okay, that one's a little... a little undercut, but that's okay. Meh. What I'll be really enraged by though is if this just ends up being something like a DC inboard fault or something. Hey, Thomas Logic. Oh, it was a... Right, Patreon one. 
Well, Dave Jones is probably going to now wonder how the heck it was that I made a comment on that stream then. On the... Ah. Because he knows I'm not on his Patreon. It'll come out in a day or so. Oh, okay. Hey, Andrew Hughes. Hey, Sodder. Hey, Jose. I've been swamped with gaming systems in Miami, Florida. Uh, I imagine everybody wants to have their stuff working so they don't die of boredom in their uh, current situation. I can admit, I am getting quite a bit of work here as well. With people just bringing machines out of the cupboards, wanting them fixed. Wait, what the? Please tell me. Okay, that's fine. Yep. Hey, Gonzalo. I mean, it's a little bit beaten up and a little bit pitted, but it's not what I'd say is going to be a problem. And it should have run from battery anyway. Oh, I've got to sneeze. <coughs> <coughs> well, hope, hope you're all wearing your masks. Okay, I'm going to put this back together and see what happens. Uh, probably nothing's going to happen. It's probably going to work just fine. I'll put it on test for a couple of days over the Easter weekend. See how it goes. But I'll, I've got another board prepared for it anyway. One that I prepared earlier. But yes, these sort of faults can definitely waste a lot of your business time. And eat up a lot of your, cost you a lot of business cre uh, credibility. So uh, better to just have a few spare boards that you know are working on hand, swap it out, and deal with it another day. It was just particularly painful with this uh, customer because they actually got two duds from me. And that really hurt. I haven't had duds in ages, and to actually get two so quickly, I was like, what the heck is going on? Should I check that DCM board? I should check that DCM board. By the way, let me know how the audio is going. I've been listening back on my videos, and I personally have a bit of a problem where I start talking into from my throat rather than projecting out forward and so I'm trying to improve on that because there's only so far a good microphone can help you if you're not going to speak properly then even the best microphone in the world is not going to save you so I'm trying to improve on that send me complaints if I fail hey Dave Legault, APL, Ben Rogers, oh, Station 240 is here, wow I haven't seen you in a while and Greg, Mongolian throat singing sounds good. Oh, I did have success today in the TP department. Went down to the shop and lo and behold, there was a row of TP all available for everybody. There's a bit of corrosion on this DC wall, but I wouldn't consider it enough to kill it, unless what's under here. Sometimes under this bit of rubber we get corrosion because it comes in through the headphone jack and then lands on the back of this audio chip if you ever go looking around on the schematics for the 1466 and 3537 you'll find there is no actually no actual audio controller and that's because it's right here on the DC inboard but so what will happen is you will get liquid coming out of this port here dribbling around here and they these caps get corroded and boom it just usually you get a failure of the audio circuit 
Sometimes it comes up still okay, but you can't get audio out on one of the channels or something like that. But realistically, this looks as good as you're going to get. Andrew Hurst, Headband Harvest. Uh, no, Headband Harvest, um, no one was actually trolling me, believe it or not. I was just listening to my own voice. And I was thinking, I cannot hear myself. I cannot understand what I am saying. Whereas, say if I listen to... Now, I hate to keep repeating the name, but... If I listen to... Sort of the blah, 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 if I listen to the likes of Lewis with his DPA microphone and things like that, I can most certainly tell the superior quality there. Now whether that is just his microphone or whether that is his charming New York voice, I'm not sure. But all I know is that was one of the key things that made me watch his videos in the end is the fact that I could actually understand what he was saying whereas everybody else at the time it was more like trying to listen to someone with a sock in their mouth talking underwater and that matters to me a lot because yeah I have poor hearing, hereditary issues, poor hearing, and when, you know, when you do hear good quality voice recordings on YouTube, you tend to sit up and take notice. Where's my fan? Hey, Warren. Yes, he, New Yorkers do talk fast, very fast, but if you can have a clear voice while they're talking fast, it gives you a chance. You can always play back at 0.75. Okay, why do I have a spare screw here? One up here. I should not have a spare screw there. Gonzalo, you, s you sound like Chinese. And that's something I'm trying to achieve for when I'm trying to speak Mandarin. Ah, itchy nose. Damn, that itchy nose. Gets me every time. Question from chat. Are the boards you repair primarily from Australia or overseas? Uh, Australia. I really do not care to take on international jobs. The cost of postage alone is enough to make it not worth it. And then there's the risk. So it, um, it's not because I'm prejudiced against people overseas. It's just that the risk factor versus the cost of the shipping, it simply makes it uh, very bad economics to take on jobs. And in most cases, people do actually have reputable repair people in their country if they can find them. Neil Lerm. Hi Paul, what type of mic are you using? This is a um, Samson wing flat. Alright, we should be back now. 
that was just coincidental that it went flat. But yes, uh, Samson XPD run stage. I think it cost me about 170 for the transmitter and the microphone and the receiver. It works quite well. It's got a fairly decent range in terms of distance range as opposed to dynamic range. I'm happy with it. I think I do need to put a little bit more effort into my own voice to maximize or to make it sound as a bit better. But overall, it's a pretty good mic. It's a pretty good combination for the price. I mean, would I like a DPA, whatever the hell that is used by the professional? Sure, who wouldn't? But I'm not going to spend that sort of money. Raymond Sullivan. Ah, you learned from Lewis. Well, thank you very much. Uh, what, do you use the open board view or the multimeter software or something like that? I mean, I've got so many different software packages that I create. Hey, Carl. And Damaras. And Ret... What is it? Retro... Retro Rejum. Welcome to your first live stream with me. I really hope this doesn't work when I power it up. I really, really hope so. Nothing worse than having a fault that you can't find. Because at least if the fault shows up, you can track it down and at least you can declare it as non-fixable or whatever. But when it doesn't even want to come to the party, that's a real problem. And sadly, you get a fair number of them. When you start doing business, and initially you have your successes, and your work queue stays nice and compact. Like behind me, I've got, uh, what have I got? I've got 16 slots. And so you, you get a job in, you fix the job, you send the job back out, your 16 slots, you look at it and you kind of think, I'm never going to fill these up. And then bit by bit, you get these jobs that don't clear out very quickly. And slowly your 16 slots get whittled down. And before you know it, you've got 15 jobs that uh, just don't want to leave the workshop. And you need to buy more slots. Raymond Sullivan, open board view manual. Okay, cool. Well, I mean, that was a... I mean, obviously that was not my software originally. That was originally created by Chlorodite. And then he was kind enough to open source it. <laughs> Pardon me. And then people like Pernov, uh, Matt, and Pathmath, and a couple of other people, they were working on it. And then they created a Linux, um, a Linux version of it that would, well, the software would be able to compile on Linux. And then I got my hands on it, forked it, did my modifications, and yeah, everything went crazy after that. And I suppose I sort of commandeered it. And then after, I think about 18, something like 18 months of work, that's when I decided to fork off and produce Flexboard View. Okay, yeah. battery in. This is probably going to just work just fine. This is 42304. What the hell? Hey, Keith McDermott. Headband Harvest. I have a MacBook Air 2014-13. Starts rejecting hard drives with question. I've had two so far after replacing hard drive. Uh, Headband Harvest, are they the Samsung drives? Because if they are, then yes, there is a problem with them. They are just failing left, right, and center.
Yeah, I'm not going to weigh in on the stickers. Not my place. Uh, Raymond, with regards to the PDF files, uh, Flexboard viewers, perhaps I know is the only one that does it quite with. Hey, okay, we've just lost SMS. Uh, maybe it is a dodgy MagSafe. You haven't troubles with the Transcend jet drives. Okay, I've not encountered that issue. That's that is something different. This is working just fine. So, yeah, not having enough information from the other side is making this difficult. Yeah, cancel. Interesting, if I cancelled, it came straight back up. Yeah, I'm not sure what to think of that. Hmm. Whoa, what the hell are you? You're dead, unfortunately. Damn it. Very interesting looking bug, but it's dead. <sighs> hey, Pernoff. off. Let's see if I can get the remnants of this bug. Sorry, but half the time this channel will turn into bugs of Australia or snakes of Australia or spiders of Australia. Maybe even occasionally bogans of Australia. Let's have a look at bugs of Australia edition today. Ah, one of you guys. Okay, so, yeah. I wonder what happened to this one. That's some impressive iridescent yellow green going on there. Yeah, it looks like you got crushed or something. But it's impressive that the colour has persisted, given that it is dead. A lot of the time when these critters die, the colour just fades away. But uh, this one's stuck around. Ah, oh, damn, camera. I think I need to get a better USB cable for this. I mean, that iridescence is so good, the camera can't even get it right. Almost looks like a dragon head. You probably can't see it to the detail that I can. But there are like little tufts of hair. That's quite impressive. Alright, you can all observe that while I try and find a board. Something else to meddle with. Okay, what's wrong with you? Okay, well we actually might have one here we need to fix. I don't know if I can fix this one, but we'll try. Sometimes, of course, you get machines that you couldn't find a proper fault with the previous time, so you just put it aside and then you hope that by coming back to it later you will sort of have a reset in your mind and hopefully maybe you'll see something you didn't see before. Anyway, that's a serious, that's a dragon bug I'd say. No, I really don't know what it is, but it's just a beetle. But honestly, it looks like like the dragon nostrils there and um, near yeah, the mouth. It's amazing what yeah, it gets. It's amazing what you can find around the place in the garden, or in my case, the desert of my workshop. This magnify. This is maximum. So I'm at. Uh, 45 times 0 0.7, so 4.5, 28, so that's about 32, call it 31, 32 magnification. Yeah, so we'll, we'll say 31 time. That's pretty impressive. And 
that's it there. The other bugs that I really like are <coughs> what we call cuckoo wasps. And they have this beautiful metallic black, green, yellow, blue sheen. We don't get them very often. Well, I don't see them very often around here. But um, every time I do manage to spot one, it's a real delight. Yeah, they're called cuckoo wasps. And this place is just rife with critters. Retro region, I'm up in North Queensland. I'm inland from a town called Townsville. I'm in a gold mining town called Charters Towers. Not a lot of people here, probably only about 5,000 actually in the town. And I like it like that, to be honest. I mean, I do would prefer to be in Townsville for quite a few things. You know, they've actually got shops there. But the solitude out here is fairly nice because it's not too quiet. It could be a little busier, but it's not too quiet. No, I didn't. Need, I wanted to put the fan in first. Oh, Mad Max, the original one, yeah. Nutty, crazy classics. I was watching Starship Troopers last... Oh, that is a, that's a classic. Classically bad, but good movie. Okay, this is a 165. If this works, I'll laugh. Aha, uh -huh, so it just dies. And then restarts. This is probably going to be a dead PCH or something. Pernov, this is a dead PCH. <laughs> hey, Leonard O'Brien. Yes, the Power Pups girls come from Townsville, as well as the Mad Monkey Professor, or whatever his name was. Hey, Max. Dead CPU, Pernov says. CPU is cool. Let's have a look. So what's our resistance? 14, 15 ohms. Mm. What do you think, Pernov? Still dead CPU at 15 ohms? Hey, Carbon. I have a 1466 piece fine when I don't have the IO board connector plugged in, but green light, no blue. Carbon, um, is that a A200165? In which case, it's probably because your power pack is not an original MagSafe 2. Arnold G is trying to conjure the NL. Well, I agree with you there, Pernov, yes, about the uh, spin stop, spin stop is not good. Hey, Crazy J. Check if platform reset low. Okay, let's have a look at platform reset low. Like I said, we're not really doing anything properly tonight. We're just bumming around. Easter, after all. Yeah, if it's a 165, then what you're experiencing is probably because of the power. You'll probably find the power cable that you're using is not a genuine one. So try it with a genuine MagSafe 2. It has to be a MagSafe 2. It can't be a genuine MagSafe 1 with a genuine MagSafe 2 adapter. That just doesn't work either. So it has to be MagSafe 2, genuine, and you may find it actually works. Fair enough, I'm actually not sure of the history of the board. It just came in dead. It... Uh, is a prior repair and they weren't able to fix it and so it ended up here because yeah because I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff okay that's all I can really say alright so we've got CPU cap issues here 
ton. It's obviously corrosion on those caps at some point. Maybe I should stick this in the ultrasonic, except the ultrasonic is cold because I forgot to hit the power on button for the heating. Hey Sonia, uh, rescue on the 165s and 3437, while you can certainly put the screw, a long screw in there, it doesn't actually do any damage because it's just a ground plane underneath the I have actually in the past donated a board to that uh, purpose of finding out what's under there and fortunately in this case there really isn't anything to be damaged yeah this is a cluster job yeah we'll, we'll check the platform reset and see what that's saying Uh, my reputation precedes me in the sense of I'm a sucker. Right, fair enough, understood. Pour liquid in plastic, microwave it, pour back, right. Maybe I should stick the whole thing into the microwave. That'd be a good trick. Okay, let's see. Bring up my board. What is this, 165? Yep, 165. Doom, 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 doom. Okay. I meant to go start typing on the board instead of. Okay. Platform reset. Choices, choices. We'll, we'll measure it at this point here under the CPU. That'd be great. Middle pin of the SOT 23.5. So that's that there. Oops, can't see it. Yeah, when people say microwave your Mac, I think they're talking about Mac and cheese usually. Um, that's a pretty vile concoction anyway. Okay, this is it here. Platform reset. Yeah, we're high. No, we're not. We just dived. And we're back up. Let's see if it dives again. I'm waiting to see if I get any green blinks. I'm not seeing any greens, so we're definitely not getting any CPU activity. Alrighty, let's see if we've got any clock. So we'll jump over to our frequency. Check our clock. And we do our 32 kilohertz. So that's happening. Fan is going berserko. We should have this here. Yeah, 3.3 .3 is good. It's no fun when everything is up and running. 8.58. Yeah, that's... 25 megahertz could be there. That's going to be fun because I actually... <sighs> You're talking about the PCH 25 megahertz, though, aren't you? As opposed to the RTC one. Let me bring this up. You're talking about this one here. I'm guessing pairing off. Now, the trouble is, trying to measure that on this meter, which does not actually go out to that, is going to be fun. 
if I'm lucky, it may actually pick up an alias, an alias signal of it, and at least tell us that something is happening. Ah, crud. Microscope. Hey, Jeff P. Talking about sysclock from clock generator. Oh, okay. Well, I'll measure this one anyway while I'm at it. What am I doing? Oops, I'm on volts. Why doesn't the multimeter know that when I'm touching a clocky thing? Well, something's happening there, but... Maybe nothing's happening there. Is your 3 point... which 3v3? You're talking about 3v3 RTC, or you're talking about 3v3 SO? Ah, oh, damn it. Still not working any boots when IO cable is disconnected. Mm, okay, well that's weird because I. Because normally when that happens with the flex disconnected, that's typically. Um, typically because of the mag safe, but looks like you've got a f fun one there. Now you've obviously tried a different mag um, DC inboard. Uh, think, think, think any corrosion on the actual connector that the flex goes into make sure check each pin on the legs yeah check check the pins make sure none of them are wiggling pin of no there's uh this meter will not do 25 megahertz but sometimes you can at least get one of the lower harmonics off it just simply because of it depends on the meter Just so you can at least see if there is some activity. I wonder if my scope can pick it up though. I do have a dodgy old scope in here somewhere. Somewhere. Where are you, dodgy scope? You're probably not going to work. The scope is only 10 megahertz bandwidth, but at least it will show me what... If nothing else, it will just show me a big black bar of trash. So what do I need? 9 volts input. Who the hell creates a 9 volt input meter? Uh, come on. What do I want? Five triple A's. I think these things want. Boom, boom, boom. Yep. Five triple A's. Bugger. Two. No, I definitely don't have a nine volt supply handy. Alright, give me two minutes, I'm going to go down and get nine AAA batteries. Oh, sorry, not nine. Five.
By the way, can everyone do me a favor and see if anyone can see Harold? Um, Harold is the creator of these chipmunks, and he's supposedly on chat right now, but uh, none of his comments are coming up for some reason. And I really don't understand why. Oh, the blasted things. The way it's just a smidge too big. So these battery manufacturers, what they do is they kind of skirt the rules a little bit on the you know, specs on the batteries and add a smidge of a millimeter so they can get that extra bit of capacity at the expense of the fact that it doesn't fit into f battery enclosures anymore. Yeah. Let's see, zipping, come on. Do you work at all? You work, man. Boo! Ah, there we go. Take mod power from, have a rejoin, give back. Uh, trouble is I have to find him to see. Let me see if I can find him in the list. Manage moderators. I'm just going to now go in and check, see if I can find him. Let's see if this thing works. Let's get some 50 hertz going on. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Sorry, there was an error processing your request. Oh, what, seriously? Sorry, something went wrong. He is not showing. Okay, let's see if I can do a participants list. Now I'm not even seeing him in the list. Thanks, Joseph. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. He's just sent me an email. He's probably right now sitting there screaming at us. Let's see, live chat. Oh, here we go. Finally, I've got the many moderators coming up. You guys can't see what I'm looking at, but uh, let's see. Control F. Harold. Harold Fanarkel. He is listed as a moderator. Alright, I've just removed him. Saving. Great. Harold, if you're listening, leave. Come back, and I'll add you in again. Hopefully it shows you up. Mm. Alright, see if this has any hope whatsoever of working. So Obviously, don't need the hook. Do think this was a little alligator clip? Okay, that's going to just reach. Yeah, Joseph, that's just it. I mean, I, he is on my moderator list. Well, I just removed him. Oh, crud. I can't tell which one's which. I'm too blind. Uh, 
All right, so there's a test point just on the above here. And I've got basically nothing going on because I'm not touching the test point. Okay, five milliseconds of division, obviously it's not going to be that fast. Five millivolts of division, even if this thing couldn't keep up with the actual clock rate, it should still be showing something. I'll try to put it on the 32 kilohertz if I can, because I am pretty damn blind. So 25, X1. I'm going to need to use the microscope for this one. At least just to get the placement of it. Alright. Okay, so you can see the 32 kilohertz is up and good there. I've forgotten. I should be getting something a bit better than that. That's at 5 millivolt of division. It should be more like this. Time division. Okay, this is point two microseconds a division. Run, please. Hmm. So we've got anything coming out of this one. Nothing. Damn it. Yeah, maybe it just can't pick it up. I would have thought it would have been able to, because this is good for about 10 megahertz. So, although 25 is a fair bit over it, I would have expected at least come something. There, fair enough, we'll try a good board, shall we? You could be... Let's try a good board. A reference. I could have sworn I used to measure RF uh, activity on my model aircraft things with this. But then again, maybe it's loading up the circuit too much. I'm not sure. What have I got a times 10 on this? Yeah. That's just, yeah. Shouldn't be doing that. Okay, fairly sure this one works. I'll just wait to see that I've got a green light coming up first. Okay, so we've got green light there. Hey, Buzz Cola. Crap. Just knocking the hell out of everything. And looks like we're... Okay, we've got the same sort of ripple, so... 
Looks like it's just a no-no. Probe is on 10. Yeah, that's out 32. Yeah. No, it looks like we're just not going to have a win that way. My equipment is too old and crusty. So, we're not going to be able to tell that way. Bugger. So much for that. I could get a scope that will do it, but I gotta admit that you know the number of times that I need to use a scope is fairly infrequent. I find it difficult to justify the cost. I mean I can spend the five hundred dollars on a lot of other things I'd rather spend five hundred dollars on. And unfortunately, none of my meters that I'm aware of will do up to 25 megahertz as even a frequency counter. Even my ProTech, I don't think, will go out to that. Uh, let's see. Because that switch body is completely jacked in it now, anyway. Maybe Dave will send you one of his scopes. Very unlikely. I'm sure Dave's got more than enough things he needs to be spending his money on. Protec 608. Hey, Mark Bianco. Thank you. I actually bought ice cream tonight, would you believe? Oh great, no flipping data sheet on it. Frequency no maxes out at five megahertz. So that's no good. I gotta admit I'm actually kinda surprised that that meter only maxed out at five megahertz because that was a fairly expensive meter in the time at the time I had it. It's a fifty thousand count meter. So it was a fairly good resolution, but I mean, how much would have it cost him to put another, you know, another um, option there f to get out to 50 megahertz? Surely not that much. Anyway, so I'm running thin on ideas here. Ooh, a hair. They're completely useless. 
Oh, I just noticed there's corrosional down there, but uh, probably nothing to do with what's going wrong. Yeah, that's just ground. I'll try it without the flex, but I doubt that's doing it. We'll put the chipmunk on the other side. Speaking of which, has Harold appeared yet? You had a board for knocked off LPC bus resistor. Oh, that was... Was that the one that... That was the one where the camera chip would um, periodically, every five seconds or so, spike and show us short. I'm pretty sure that's the one you were talking about. Funny you should mention that, Thomas. Uh, I actually used to have a portable CRT test screen. I would take it wherever I would travel. It was like, I think about a seven or a nine inch grayscale one. And yeah, whenever I'd travel all around in South Africa or Southern Africa rather, I would take that thing with me and it just fit into my uh, luggage I think I bought the screen and then I found some luggage that would fit it. It was very handy to have that. There's never the SPR wrong with those symptoms, but maybe. Hmm. Who are you talking to, Pernov? Me or uh, Calbon? By the way, Pernov, you're going to have to refresh me. What was LPC meaning? LPC, I can't think of what that means. It is interesting to note that we're stuck at 360, 370 milliamps. Nothing else. What's more interesting is that the CPU is not warm. So we've got heat coming up somewhere. But where? If the CPU is not getting warm at 360, we've got something cooking up. Then again, maybe it is going to the CPU, but the... Um, the heat pipe's cooling it down. Yeah. Bus between SMC and... P oh, right. Low pin cut. Um, actually, I was amused by Dave Jones's video because he made a mistake somewhere in it and he attributed it not to dyslexia but just simply to not paying attention and it was quite nice to see someone say that because often I make plenty of mistakes like that and it seems like, yeah, I'm thinking it is actually just a CPU. Okay. Wherever this heat is, it's weird. It's coming over here. Nope, here. It's all over the place, actually. Maybe it is... I'm still sticking... Th Something's warm, but... Nah... I think it is the CPU getting warm. It just took a while for the heat pipe to start carrying it. Yeah, Rescue, I deliberately haven't got the cable connected.
use the cheek test. I prefer to use the tongue test. It's less cheeky. Certainly less painful than the um, the sack test. Uh, we're not going to use metho, we're going to use isopropylene. We don't use metho because there's about 5% water in that. Yeah, the CPU is already clearing it, I think. PCH is drying off fastest. Seems like it starts around about there. So, there we go. Alright, watch your verdict pan off. Just heats up at that point and spreads out. That's annoying. Nothing out of the ordinary, fair enough. Check USB data pins for a short. That's actually not a bad idea. Though they would normally manifest in a different kind of way, I would have thought. APC Vitamins Professional Repairs. It is currently 2331. So it will be midnight now now. What would you half twelve? Ha, <laughs> Margarita if only I was not. Did I check the sleeve? Joshua Bell, you talking about the platform reset or something else? I really want to throw this into the ultrasonic, something so bad, but unfortunately the ultrasonic is running cold at the moment, so there's not much point. 27 centigrade is not going to be enough to get this flux to come off. CPU swap, well, we'll try that. Mm. Paul has dad jokes, yes I do. 1431 afternoon. PC Vitamins, where in South Africa are you? Ah, uh, Pianov, uh, if I could I would send this one to you to have a stuff around with. It looks like the BIOS has been swapped out. I'm guessing also that the clock chip has been swapped. <laughs> Unfortunately also, Pernov, it could be a whole class of possible faults causing this. I'm guessing that HSIO switch has been swapped. Johannesburg, cool. Total lockdown. Yeah, okay. And are they actually honouring that in Johannesburg? Or is everyone just toy toying with it? But I suppose then the police will be out and they'll blick some all the people who aren't honouring it. Check the activity between the SPI and LPC. Alright. 
Yeah, that looks fresh and healthy. The fact that it came off and all looking nice and shiny there means that it has been replaced. The only trouble pan off is that that scope is not a DSO. It's just a running scope. So if there is any transients, they'll just run straight through. There probably is a hold facility on that, but I genuinely do not know how to use it. And I've lost the instructions. Wow, there's someone eyelash. Anonymous repair is in Cape Town. Uh... No one ever remembers anything about Cape Town because by the time they start planning to head back and they go through all the vineyards, I mean, they're completely sloshed before they get back to the airport and it's all just a bizarre memory. And you wake up back when you're back home in Johannesburg, stagger back to your house. This is... What's going on here? As well as plugging in a postcard to see if at least trying to run the EFI. Uh, yeah, I think I really need a DSO to help me on that one, Pianoff. And I do not have a DSO. I know, I know you could just try various things but uh, I'm, I'm a lazy man and to be honest if I'm going to start putting effort into things I'm going to start stuff like trying to make my own bow or bow and arrows or something crafty and I kind of wonder if there isn't something going on around here I mean this is where the damage was so it kind of makes you feel like you know, could it be something here? Need a higher... Yeah, well, there you go. Yep, I'm doomed anyway. The copper looks a little sketchy. Bob, Bob, it certainly does look a little sketchy. I'd say a lot sketchy. Eight ohms, seven ohms. Yeah, it's pretty normal for the CPU, I think. Damn it, I can't hold it steady. I can't hold it steady, Captain. Yeah, that, that's all. There's no short amongst all that. Yuck. There's any incompetence with me holding the tips. Yep. Hey, Lux 7K. And we still don't have uh, Harold back. That's a real concern. I'm just going to check my email to see if Harold's made any attempts at contact. He probably has. He's probably left a thousand emails to me now. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Watching somehow, da la la. And I mean, as far as I know, you can't block a moderator. Moderator can't block a moderator, as far as I understand. is going on?
No, well, I have in front of me, I have a um, big list of hidden users, and he's definitely not on that list either. There's a lot. Oh, look, Robert King's there. <laughs> that's a name always. That's amusing. And there's no blocked words. Um, it looks like you can block a mod. Okay. But is it actually an effective block or is it just a ineffectual thing? Hmm. Interesting, it's got a class of users called approved users. I don't know what that is. So I've got moderators, approved users, hidden users, and uh, he's not listed in any of them. But is he at Discord? I don't believe so, no. Yeah, it's got me stumped. Hmm. Very stumped. Almost as stumped as this board. Um, I'm thinking maybe we just drop kick the board. Maybe it is just a CPU death. If only we could just replace the CPU and find out. I mean, it's not the prettiest looking board by any means. We could go along and just try changing all the... <laughs> change all the possible things, but it obviously is trying to... You know, it's getting into SO's state. This is a different board. This is just one of my donors. Weird. That does not... I must have taken that cap off for another job. I uh, see at least Pernov's trying to... Be, is being useful to someone else. That's good. Right. Try to remove two little balls and end up creating four. One thing that's a concern is that we've got this cooked edge bonding here and here. Yeah. More cat hair.
Uh, this one might just have to be a... Uh, the, to be fair, we have not changed the SMC on this. Not that I would consider this normally an SMC type fault, but um, do we want to give it a shot? Do we want an SMC replacement on stream? Does anyone ever say no to that? Well, let's give it a shot with the SMC, shall we? I mean, like, I don't have anything better to do other than, you yeah, know, time to spend with my wife and my fair kids, but hey, no, I'll stick around and entertain all of you folk for hundredths of a cent per minute. Yeah, I know, I know. It seems like I'm being stupid and just fluxing up a board a chip that's still edge bonded, but, uh, this is just to make it a little easier for me to get these things off. Worst case scenario, we end up with a SMC that we can use somewhere else. Maybe. There is hoping. I'll be surprised if it is, but, you know, who knows. One way to find out, and we're doing it. Should I get some heat into this board? Oh, you're welcome, Ed. You're welcome. My apologies for my lack of dedication to replying when I said I would reply to you. Annex, you don't seem to be banned here. I can see your comments perfectly clearly. Heat up, come on. Didn't we try to clear your previous ban without success for some reason? Like it's not on my list anymore, but it's still for some reason rejecting you. Okay, so this is a 165 board. Now I'm going to try and remember to mark this chip. Because all too often I will take an SMC off and I'll find that it wasn't the fault and then I will lose the SMC or I'll forget what board it's from when it actually is a functional SMC and I'm, I've got to buy a donor board for every time I want one of these so that's 20 bucks. So I've got to try and remember to mark these. So SMC, well we know it's an SMC. It's a 820-00165. Um, maybe. Maybe work. Now what I need to do is, when I put the new SMC on there, if it still has the same symptoms, then I know that this SMC, blah, 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 blah. I will know that this SMC 
most likely is okay. The trick is to remember to do that. Okay, so this is a 165, so we'll just take it straight from here. Well, Bob, what I'm hopefully going to do is we will know in the next 20 minutes whether this is going to be good or bad. So at that point, I will mark it as confirmed and throw it up into my second hand parts bin, which is pretty much the same as new parts bin because all the new parts that you get for these machines generally are second hand. Freshly squeezed from an existing main board. Ah, uh, this is the this is the stuff that just crumbles. Too hot. Right, where's my Grim Reaper? Ah, oh, hiding. I see. I'm only doing this because I don't want to have to struggle to get this chip off. You know, I want to be able to just, when the solder's, when the solder has reflowed, I want it to be able to come off. I don't want to be fighting against this epoxy stuff or whatever it is, this silicon. Look. All right, that's good. Need some more suction. Uh, today we'll be doing balls. I don't have any good paste at the moment. So it'll be balls indeed. 
first step we'll do is actually clean up this chip before we bother to clean up the tray or anything like that. If I'm going to be using solder paste, I really do want to have fresh paste if I can. It just makes it that little bit easier. Yep, the two ball method it will be. Now right now I'm just trying to fix up any of the grey pads that are down there. I think I've got most of them by the looks of it. If you don't clear up those grey ones then the balls don't stick to it. Let's get our isopropylene. I didn't want to hit it too soon. I don't want to shock the chip any more than I have to. Okay. Just take it out of that socket. And I'm just going to, you're not going to be able to see it, but I'm just washing it between my fingers. These gloves, although they're a little bit thick, for the um, normal work that I'm doing. They do have one upside and that is they've got a slightly textured surface so it means rubbing my rubbing the SMC between it kind of clears them up nicely. Oops. Yeah but now we need to wash out all of this because there's a whole bunch of flux in there and if we try to do the reballing with all that flux in there, it will just make it misbehave. Having a few residual solder balls and there's no big problem, they're not going to do anything. It's the flux that you want to worry about. Nice and dry. Damn it. I contaminated the... Yeah, it's not too bad at least. I contaminated the surface slightly. With the wrong finger on my glove. It's not critical, I'm just being pedantic. Okay, that's better. Now we just need to get ourselves two donor balls. Any of these ones down here will do. And they don't even have to be on opposing corners. They can just, as long as they're fairly separated on the chip. Opposing corners is just sort of geometrically the most effective. That's one. Let's 
let's see. 420, and we're going to go down to about 12 litres of air per minute. Well, uh, even 12 is a bit much. Okay, that's done. That's weird, it's a little bit reluctant that one. Right, that's much better. Ah, oh, Calvon stencil is coming. We're just putting in the opposing corners first. Drop the stencil on. And now we can pour our balls on. Which reminds me, I still have not received my... I still haven't received my um, order of 0.35s. So I'm starting to run low. Hopefully I've got a clean finger here that I can rub these in. Oh shoot, way too many. And Paul wonders why he's running low on the balls required. Maybe because he puts about 200 too many into the... That's okay. Now we just get the surgical knife. I don't know whether I've got something on the surface of. Might have been something on the glove, but uh, these balls are misbehaving compared to what I'm normally used to. There's a lot of adhesion between them. I don't normally have this level of adhesion. So i got to admit it's making my job a little bit more tricky. Uh, see, it just tried to yank that its uh, companion out. It might have been that the glove created a electrostatic attraction, I'm not sure. All I know is that it just made my life a little bit harder and there's no need to put one in there, Paul, because it's, that's one of your corner balls. Alright, I think we're good. Yeah, just a few too many spilled out that time. I mean, you sort of anticipate some spillage, but that was a little bit crazy. Alright, I can work with this. 
Make sure I haven't missed any. I think that's looking good. Yep. Okay, let's go with it. Okay, we just want to get deformities going. You'll see it, the balls will lose their sheen. I'll get a bit of flat top. Okay, that's good. And then crap, I haven't got my flux ready. No. Nope. Paul's botched it up. Uh, let's go in for the full reflow now. Looks good. Yep, top middle is not. And we've got a couple of Try again. Let's see, here we go. Wrong tweezers. That looks good. My apologies if I'm missing things on chat that I'm supposed to be answering. When you're focusing on the SMC balls, you sort of tend to forget everything else. Uh, margarita, well, I could, but I guess I haven't gotten around to it, shall we say. I'm actually wanting to get a desktop CNC, and that should allow me to start doing the things that I actually do want to do. I've had a couple of opportunities but like I said for me right now my biggest focus is I've got a I've achieved my first milestone on the savings that I need to make in terms of uh, for the house but I've decided given the current economic climate I'm going to save up about another 15,000 before I go to the bank and ask because basically I want to make sure that they've got absolutely no reason to not give me a loan so I'm going to go in and try and get in at about uh, a 30% deposit or a, yeah, certainly about a 30% 30% 30 
30% deposit. Because I'm going to tell you, I am sick of not having property. I used to have property when I was in South Africa, but then that's because property over there is dirt cheap. If you have um, money other than South African Rand. But I had to sell that up when I left the country. Because, I mean, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a South African, so it was already fun enough getting that uh, getting my house in the first place when I was over there but anyway I, anyway I had to sell it up and it didn't really translate to a lot of money when I came back here <laughs> it was enough to pay for a wedding and a couple of other things and that was it anyway so that's what the hold up is that's why I haven't really spent a lot of money on fancy fun things that I could use here in the workshop because priorities Joshua Bell, yeah, that was um, that was just a flux bubble, and you're right. They under the microscope camera, they do show up quite the same. Uh, Vladimir, well, I was always, I am an Australian, so getting out of South Africa wasn't a problem. In fact, the problem I had was trying to stay in South Africa. They ended up kicking me out. It was politically inappropriate for me to stay after four and a half years they chose not to renew my visa I understand and it was a good thing I did come back I mean I met my wife the first day I came back here and how can you complain about that geez that, that was a long drift that one Oh, CMI Zapper. Hey, Harold. Okay. Add mod. Right, yeah. Gonzalo, I'm the same here, actually. I have no trouble meeting my obligations. It's just because I am a sole trader, the banks really do not like sole traders, no matter where you go we represent a significant risk financial risk to them even though well, yeah even though I've had no troubles for a great many years I've got no debts no credit card debts nothing the trick is you pretty much as a sole trader you basically have to accept that you're effectively going to have to pay cash for most things you're not going to get many loans Alright, so SMC's on, it looks good. Yeah, rent is not part of the credit score. I think they're changing that locally here in Australia. I think now the banks have to factor in your good attributes or the successes you have had in that respect, whereas before they only looked at where you went wrong. Alright, let's see if we have any luck here. Actually, we need to cool this board down. We need to use the turbo cooler. Uh, it's quite effective. Far better than rapid cool technology. Rapid cool is not cool. No, it's not rapid cool. This is turbo cool. Rapid cool cannot successfully draw boards in entire boards into its gaping more certainly not from the vertical
Here we go, fingers crossed, let's hope the CPU doesn't blow. We're probably not going to see any luck. 365, so we're about the same milliamp draw. And it's doing the weird stuttering thing. Yeah, it dropped out again. Alright, no good. So we can deduce that this SMC is probably okay. Likely good. <sighs> That's a bit of a bummer. And it's a quarter past midnight too. Uh, Joseph King as a sole trader, yeah, things are very complicated, yet oddly simple but extraordinarily complicated in terms of half the time you go to a bank and they don't even know how to actually respond to the fact that you're a sole trader. Like they say to me, well, show me your expenses and things like that, and you write down your expenses, but the trouble is often with sole traders, as you probably know, um, there's a fair portion of your expenses that are actually business expenses but also are things that you do for daily life um, particularly if you're working at home and you um, you then either have to double deduct that so you basically your tax statement will show your gross and your net income but the trouble is you know your expenses taken out of um, your gross are sort of some of the things that you could declare as your weekly or monthly expenses under a normal circumstance when you're writing it out for the bank so they can see how much you spend. And so you either have to declare yourself as being poorer or present to the bank what seems to be an oddly um, low cost of living that you have. And they actually do not like it when you can show that you have a very low cost of living. They sort of think it's a trick. It confuses them. So uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with that this time around. Anyway, so I, I don't know, this, is it dead? Is it something else? I'm really not sure. It's clearly not the SMC. We've got exactly the same fault. It's another one that's going to go back into the, we don't have a clue what's wrong with it board. Probably a good idea not to put Lewis as a reference on the bank. <laughs> well, I've noticed that Lewis can't even get a loan half the time anyway, too. For different reasons. Funnily enough, though, I'd imagine his staff, a member of his staff, a full-time member, would probably have no trouble getting a loan. Banks are just weird like that. I'm sure they have their reasons and I don't understand them. I'm not, perhaps, uh, economically inclined in that way. I have that kind of thinking that they do. But I find it difficult to understand their reasoning at times. I know they're basically risk-driven, but... Uh, they want to see your history, but at the same time, they sort of anticipate that your history is meaningless. So they're kind of playing the game from both sides. Your business needs to give you a wage each week, if possible, and the bank won't ask for business details. Yeah, unfortunately, Buddha Tech, I'm not really sure I want to take that route because that basically means I need to become um, a company or a proprietary limited or something like that. And that really messes up a whole lot of other things. So I think it's going to be easy for me to just simply go to the bank with a much bigger deposit. And that will alleviate their concerns. Ben, I've tried that. Um, it's a little hard around here. Maybe I'll... Yeah, I don't know. Joshua Bell, 15 mega ohm. 3v3 drops out. Lewis would check what? I'm not sure what you're saying there. Did you ever use Mandrake Linux in 2000? I did get a copy of Mandrake. I think I tried it once or twice. But because it was French-based, 
I found it problematic. There were a few areas that they still hadn't... Uh, was it Mandrake or was it Mandrivia? I can't remember. Anyway, it was a French-based Linux distribution, and it seemed quite good, but um, because of the French aspect, I had a few troubles. I think I've been naughty here and... Oh. Okay. This goes back onto the bench. The bench of disappointments. I might put a paper towel on that one. That's getting a little too soaked with flux now. Weep on of, you did. I only did six months of French and I failed that for the first three months because the teacher didn't realise that I couldn't hear properly and she thought I was being ignorant. Yeah, at that time I was using Slackware and then I kept using Slackware. I was also using um, BSD. Which one was it? It wasn't net, it wasn't free, it was BSDI, I think, I can't remember. Anyway, I did s at that point start moving over to FreeBSD for our firewalls and I still used Slackware myself and then by the time I got to Australia which was just after 2000 and around about 2004, 2005 Nopix came out on a um, CD and that was one of the first sort of really good live distributions that they had and then a couple of years later Ubuntu came out of course with um, 6.04 or 6.10 well, obviously it was 2006 and um, I changed over to uh, Ubuntu at that point and never really looked back so it was 13 years ago now hmm. it was renamed Mandrivia due to copyright issues on the Mandrake name ah that's right the Marmaduke Mandrake was it it wasn't open or net BSD. I know I definitely did use free BSD, but there was another it was the commercial one. I keep thinking BSDI for some reason, but I don't seem to recall that right. I am going to a credit union. They're the ones that actually did look at my application. My primary bank that I use for business, which is the Commonwealth Bank here in Australia. They pretty much flatly just said, "Look, we're we're not going to give you a home loan because we're not in we're actually trying to walk away from home loans as much as we can. Personal banking, they seem to be wanting to focus more on business banking, and that's fine from a business perspective. They they work well for me. They don't give me any dramas, but it does seem that in terms of chasing a home loan and things like that, I am going to have to go to a credit union." Um, and try. I had more success there, even though I had no actual history with the credit union. Have you tried a broker? I have, but the brokers are a little bit weird. So um, for now, I'm going to try the credit union again. Like I said, I'm going to go in with 20-30% deposit and I hope that will work. The other thing that I've noticed is the Australian government has the um, mortgage, uh, what was it? mortgage guarantee system now that they're offering. So I think they're putting about 10,000 of those out each financial year and the turnover is obviously the next financial year which is June this year or after June so I may go in that and see if I can get that and at least then that alleviates part of the concern that the bank might have in terms of me not being able to provide a secure enough uh, repayment system for them and if the government steps in and decides that they're going to um, provide the government guarantee for me then I'm all for that it is interesting, Joseph, yeah, but then again, I mean, the Commonwealth Bank was sold out to the public, you know, went on to the uh, stock market, and, yeah, once that happens, that's it, it's it's over. It's a continuous decline on supporting the people. It's just the way it goes, yep. All right, Crazy Joe, well, I've got to go too, anyway. So, that's just the way it's going to be. Um, I'll keep you up to date as things happen. I think that board's just, I'm just going to send it back to the person and say, look, I just can't fix it that's a little bit too much work I've now put into it and you know it's, return on investment in this case is not happening so that's okay these things sometimes go that way and you just gotta say no and as for the bouncing system I will uh, take another board put it in give it a test for over the four days and 
hopefully we don't have that bounce again. Let's see how we go. I'm going to go off, get some vanilla ice cream and also have some mint ice cream. It'll be a nice change. I haven't had that in about uh, a month now, so my taste buds are really going for it. So thanks very much for sticking in, watching around. I said that backwards, but that's the way it goes. I will catch you all next time. You'll take care. I'll see you later.